Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're starting a new unit. We're going to do some button pushing today, tricking inverse values with the calculator. And this is Mr. G, and also we have here Mr. Monahan. Hey guys, how's, how's it going? So we're going to get started, and I'm going to start with basically how to push some buttons on your calculator. This is going to be crazy exciting. Let's come up here and grab a, a blue pen. We want to find the cosine of 39 degrees. Now, you just took a quiz over finding things like the cosine of 30 degrees or the sine of 45 degrees, things you could do without a calculator. Unfortunately, there are some triangles that aren't so happy. And in that instance, we have to use a calculator. So in this instance, I'm going to grab the cosine of 39 by actually pushing that button on the calculator. If you could pull that up for me, Ryan, please. So here we go. The first thing you better make sure of on your calculator is the mode better be in degrees. Now looky here, my calculator is not in degrees, so I'm going to scroll down there, scoochie over there, hit enter. We are now in degrees, so that must be true. I don't think I had to hit that twice, whatever. All right, so off we go. Looky here, COS, that stands for the cosine. So if you ever want to find the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse on a specific angle, you hit that button, type in 39, close parentheses, just for aesthetics, you really don't have to on the 84, and hit enter. And we're going to go how many decimal places, Mr. Monahan? Three decimal places. You can either truncate or round. I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm usually a rounder. Um, this is just .777. So that's what I'm going to write down as my answer to that. Don't mind pulling up our untitled there. So this was .777 is the answer to that. Take it away. Okay, guys. Well, just like what we did with the, with the problem beforehand, we're going to go straight back to our calculator, and it's going to be the sine, which is S-I-N, of 212. 212. And I am not going to close my parentheses because I believe in efficiency. Gotcha. And we get negative 0.529. Now, I could round that to negative 0.52 or 530. As long as I have three decimal places all day and all night, it doesn't matter if I round or truncate. I'm going to choose to truncate. So I'm going to go back here, and it's going to be, grab a pen, I think I'm going to write in black. Okay. And it's going to be negative point point five, five, two. Five, two, nine. Oh. Now, unlike Mr. G's nice pretty answer up here with triple repeating sevens, we have a negative. And let, let's discuss why this is negative. So I'm going to go down here and draw my coordinate axis. I'm going to come up here and grab a a red pen because math is best in pretty colors and I know that 212 is going to be over here in quadrant 3 and if I was an, if I was a good student I'd go over here and I'd say well I know that x that negative x axis over there is 180 so I'm going to be 212 minus 180 enter and it's going to give me a a reference angle of 32 degrees. Now that's 32 degrees in the third quadrant. So let's go, let's go back over here. So this guy right here was 32 degrees. Now I can go back to my calculator and I can realize that if I had typed in the sine of 32 degrees, I should get 0.52. 0.529, what I'd just gotten beforehand. But being as it was in the third quadrant, remember it's 1, 2, 3. At both sine and cosine are negative down here. Tangent's positive, but sine and cosine are negative. My answer is going to be a negative answer. So, Mr. G, if you'll take part C for us, that'd you, be great. You got it. All right. That's a good question to ask yourself, too, so make sure that you are uh, getting reasonable answers. Uh, cotangent of 56. This is a this is a struggle here because when we go back and look at the calculator, if you'll pull that up for me, please, Mr. Okay. Monahan, we are not going to have a cotangent button. I'm looking around here, oh my, no, oh no, it's not there. Sine, cosine, or tangent. Some people might think, well, what about that tangent negative one thingy there? That does not mean the reciprocal of tangent. For trig functions, we have the, I guess, just the convention that a negative one is going to mean the inverse function. So that will actually undo tangent. So we're going to do that in a second. So how am I going to do a cotangent if I don't have the cotangent button? If you can get me back to untitled, please. No problem. Alrighty, so here we go. This is what you're going to do if you don't have a cotangent button. You are going to use your reciprocal identities, and you're going to write this as 1 divided by the tangent of 56 because you know the, that relationship between cotangent and tangent. 
So you just do that on your calculator, 1 divided by the tangent of 56 degrees, 1 divided by tangent 56, I'll close parentheses, and I'll get, I'm going to round this one, you can, it's 0.674 or 0.675, I'm going to round this to 0.675. All right, Mr. Monahan, off you go. Okay, I'll go back and give myself some black ink. Yeah, all right. Now, just like the cotangent and the problem beforehand, we know that the secant of x is equal to the one is the reciprocal of the cosine function. So, what we're going to do is we're going to end up taking the cosine of 245 and then dividing that or and then taking the reciprocal of that or 1 divided by the cosine of 245 so we have 1 divided by now whenever I do division I like to put my denominator in parentheses Not a bad idea. just to make it safe but we will double close and we get negative 2.366 now, once again, that's three decimal places every day, all night. And so we're going to go back and we can, well, truncating and rounding here is just the same thing. So that was negative 2.366. So let's get myself a pen. So that was equal to 1 over the cosine of 245 was equal to negative 2.366. 366. And once again, just like in part B, this is telling me that my cosine of 245, which is going to be in the third quadrant, once again, it's going to be in this third quadrant, so my answer is negative. So this makes sense. Hurrah. Smiley face. Awesome. All right, now we're going to go backwards, and we are going to have statements about the cosine and we're going to go back and figure out the angle and I want to tell you that this is equivalent to saying that the cosine of the angle was equal to 0 0.619 so basically somebody came along pressed the COS button pressed in magic angle that we don't know yet and the calculator returned to them the value of 0 0.619 so we want to know what that tricky little person put in what what angle did they take the cosine of to get this and the way we do that is something called the arc cosine button. You'll see the word arc when uh, Mr. Monahan I think does the next one, or it might be something like it. it doesn't matter. You'll see it in a second. But this means arc cosine. So that's just a button on the calculator to push. We can get there, and that is above cosine in blue. That's arc cosine. So I'm going to do the arc cosine, and I honestly forgot what that number was. Uh, you'd be better off than I was. I was seeing I think it was 0.619, but I, okay, 0.619. All right, so 0.619, and this will tell me in degrees. Ah. Okay, in degrees. Now, we're going to go back and forth with degrees. Degrees, sometimes we're going to be told to round to the nearest whole degree, but for now, to keep with to be consistent, we're going to go three decimal places again with degrees. Sometimes you will be told to round to the nearest degree, even in calculus. So I'm going to have this answer. What's that going to be? Now, since I rounded earlier, I'm going to call that 51.757. Yes, sir. All right, 51.757. So theta equals 51.757 degrees. All right, Mr. Monahan. Okay. Now we have an arctangent problem. So once again, we know that when someone typed into the calculator, they did the tangent of some theta and got 2.471. Now, they were a good pre-cal student, and they gave me three decimal places, which makes me happy. I'm going to harp on this all semester long, three decimal places all day and all night. Now, what can I do? So what this was is, is the tangent of some theta was 2.471. So what I want to know is I want to know the theta, which would be, which will be the arc tan or tan to the negative one. It's not the inverse tan. It's not one over tan. One over tan is cotangent. But I want to know what the arc tan of 2.471 was. I'm going to go down here, and this second tangent, and get that tan to the negative one of 2.471. Close my parentheses, 
and voila, we get 67.967. Now, we could round that up to 68 degrees, but being we're sticking with three decimal places, we're going to say it's 67.967. So that person had typed in theta was 67.697. Seven. I think it might have been nine six seven, but let's go back and look at that. I, okay. Let's see. Uh, nine yep. six seven. There we go. Okay, I flip flopped my numbers, so that was sixty seven point nine six seven. Yep. Tell you what, there we go. All right, so now off we go again to a problem where we don't have an arc secant button. There's no arc secant button. <laughs> Sorry about that. There's no <laughs> arc secant button on the calculator, so I'm not going to go back and show you that. You can go off on a little. Uh, Easter egg hunt to see if you can find it. You won't find it there. So I'm going to show you what to do here. Again, this is the same statement as the secant of some angle worked out to be 3.156. Now, Mr. Monahan, I'm going to, we could also say this means 1 over cosine theta is 3.156, but I'm going to jump straight to this step right here. I'm going to say that this means that the cosine of that angle would have been 1 over 3.156. You see that reciprocal relationship between secant and cos cosine? The reason I'm doing this is because I've got an arc cosine button. I know have a arc secant button. So my answer for this is going to be theta equals the arc cosine of 1 over 3.156. And I'm just going to do this on my calculator here. Arc cosine 3.156. And that is making sure I am in. I didn't do one divided by. Um, I wish I had some music or something to keep you guys interested while I'm okay 71.527 you can verify that on your own calculator and I think Mr. Monahan gets our last example ah the end is in sight we can see the finish line or the light at the end of the tunnel no depending on how you see it so much like this problem up here we're, you're not gonna find an arc cotangent button but what this question is asking me is is the cotangent of what angle was 0.684. Well, another way of doing this is it would be the 1 over the tangent of what theta was equal to 0.684. Now, Mr. G could have done this up here in his example, but this is just another way of doing one of your inverse trigs. So, what I want to know is so I'm going to multiply this, multiply the tangent over, and I'm going to get. 1 is equal to the tangent of theta times 0.684. I'll divide both sides by 0.684. I'm sorry for boring you guys with this trivial math. I had just gotten done doing some Algebra 1, and I tell you what, my kiddos could, could use this lesson. Oh, it's never trivial. Cross-multiplying, you can't see that enough. Okay, well, this cancels, and I get the tangent of what theta would be equal to 1 over 0.684, which is the same as the arctan, which what you'll also see is written as arctan. It's quite really arc, like Jane of arc. Joan. Joan of arc. There we go. <laughs> uh, my history. Arctan is not even a theta. It's a thing. Arctan of... One, just scratch that. We're going to start over. There you go. Tan of 1 over... 0.684 and Mr. G has been very kind and has shown me that the light in it is 55.627 or 0.628. I chose to truncate but so 55.627 and I think that will be all for today. Yeah. Mr. G, any parting words? I will see you guys tomorrow.